Okay, so let's feel what this means, this rotational inertia idea. So I'd asked you in your um, activity to go grab a wooden spoon or a rubber scrapper, or if you have a baseball bat at home, that works too. Um, even if you just had maybe some Play-Doh or some clay and globbed it on the end of your pet, anything like that would work. So we, we watched the video on rotational inertia and this idea of if I distribute the mass further away from the axis of rotation, I have more rotational inertia. How does that really feel? All right, so we're gonna take your wooden spoon and I want you to hold it by the handle at the end. And I want you to rotate it at about two axes. One axis that kind of runs towards you and away from you, okay? So we're gonna rotate it about that axis, meaning we're gonna go right and left of that axis. So kind of feel how it feels to rotate the wooden spoon in that regard with the bulk of the mass away from the axis. Now I want you to rotate it about an axis up and down. So just spin it. Hmm, is it easier, more difficult? Uh, it should feel a little bit easier. When the mass is distributed close to the axis all along, it's the bulk of the mass up here is very close to the axis, as is the mass down here, it's really easy to spin. Low moment of inertia. When the mass is far away from the axis, very difficult to spin, higher moment of inertia. Now you actually probably intuited this if you ever played t-ball when you were a little kid, right? So you're playing t-ball and you see those big kids playing t-ball and they use the really heavy bat. So you go, pretend this is a baseball bat, you go and you pick up that really, really heavy bat and you hold it by the end and oh my gosh, you can hardly even swing it, it's so heavy. So what does your coach tell you to do? They tell you to choke up on the bat, right? Get your axis of rotation closer to the mass. Makes it really easy to rotate the bat or the wooden spoon like this versus this. Pretty easy to rotate it if the mass is close to the axis, which is now here, versus far away. So you choke up on that baseball bat to be able to rotate it much easier. So the closer you distribute the mass to the axis of rotation, the easier it is to rotate, which means it has a lower moment of inertia. All right. Well, moment of inertia also has to do with balance. If you're following along in the Physics 211 course online class, this is where you would pause the video and make your prediction. So if rotation has to do, or if the moment of inertia has to do with how easy it is to get something to rotate, it also has to do with stability. Because after all, if I'm really stable, gravity, the earth is not tipping me over or rotating me to the ground. So here's the prediction. Thinking about rotational inertia, thinking about mass distribution, would it be easier to balance my wooden spoon with my finger at the tip here on the handle, or to balance my wooden spoon with the finger here at the head of the wooden spoon. Right, so this is where you wanna pause the video and make your prediction, think about it before you see the answer. And then take your wooden spoon and test it out. You should find that it's easier to balance when, the, well, that's not very easy at all, but to balance when the head of the wooden spoon is at the top versus if I try to balance with the head of the wooden spoon, it starts to tip over right away. Why is that? Well, there's a higher rotational inertia when the head of the wooden spoon, the more massive part, is higher up. There's a higher rotational inertia. It's harder to get that object to rotate, even for gravity to tip it over. And so it's easier for you to balance. All right, so get a feel for how that rotational inertia plays with your wooden spoon or rubber scraper. And we understand that the further I move, or your baseball bat, the further I move my mass away from the axis of rotation, the more difficult it is to get something to rotate, the higher the rotational inertia. All right, good job.